what's going on guys i'm ari and i'm felicia and we are back with another episode of hauntingly wisconsin so before we start the episode just wondering how was everybody's holidays yeah i know we haven't recorded in quite a while yeah. me getting sick you breaking myself as usual well i mean <coughs> i went a pretty long time without breaking a bone so i'll take it i thought you just sprained up well yeah but i have broken 15 bones so <laughs> i've never broken a bone but it's not fun and every time I've broken a bone, it's been in the summertime when I love to go swimming. So I always have to wrap myself up in a garbage bag. So don't break your bones during summertime. Um, preferably ever. True. But it's more of a fall time thing, you know. Maybe <laughs> Back winter. to school. <laughs> yeah, winter <laughs> when it's too cold to go outside. So you want to be on crutches in a cast in winter? Mm, that's a good point. I had such a hard time with the crutches when I sprained my foot. I was walking, well not walking, I was using them at work and I had to go talk to my boss and I almost like broke my whole entire body because the crutches kept sliding because you know it's not a regular floor so <laughs> that was fun. Why can't I just picture all of that? Oh, cause with me that should be like such an easy picture to come up with. Pretty much. Today's topic is going to be the Maribel Caves and Hotel Hell. And I'll let Felicia start this one off for us. So I'm going to start out with the Maribel Caves and the hauntings that occur there. But before I do so, I'm going to start with a brief history about some of the caves and how they came to be. The Cherney Maribel Caves were formed primarily by solution prior to the last ice age. Glaciers wore down the surface of the land and exposed a layer of rock called Niagara Dolomite, which is another form of limestone. The rock had exposed crevices and sinkholes that allowed water to flow through and enter the cave. As the glaciers melted, the rushing water enlarged the existing cave. The caves were first discovered in 1892 by a man named Henry A. Eldridge, later to be purchased by Charles Brecher, who built the Maribel Caves Hotel, aka Hotel Hell, in the 1900s right alongside of the caves. But Ari will get to that in a bit. Over the next 32 years, many tourists would come from all over the world to come see the caves and be a guest at the hotel. In 1931, Adolf Cherney bought the property, including the nearby hotel. Cherney sold the property that the caves are on to Manitowoc County, becoming the first park in the county. When Cherney sold the property, he insisted the park stayed with the name Cherney Maribel Caves. County Park was added soon after. Cherney Maribel Caves County Park is located near Maribel, Wisconsin in Manitowoc County. The park is 75 acres along the West Twin River. Maribel Caves is home of eight caves. One has newly been discovered. The caves run along a rugged cliff that runs parallel with the West Twin River. Now let's start talking about the caves and the surrounding areas that are claimed to be pretty haunted. The first cave we will discuss is Cooper's Cave. This cave is located about halfway along the park's bluff. The opening is large and rectangular. There is also a smaller opening alongside the rectangular opening. It's a square tube solutional cave that is quiet and dry. Under the cave, about nine feet, is a natural spring that flows into the West Twin River year round. This cave is one of the caves that people claim to hear voices. While I was doing my research, I did come across a few videos of people with spirit boxes. And if you don't know what a spirit box is, it's basically like a radio that is supposed to um, cancel out some kind of frequency. All right, so I just looked it up while you were talking and it basically a spirit box just looks like one of those frequency modulators that have the like the speaker and like the Bluetooth on it. Right, right. Like when, when I watched the videos, it basically was described like it cancels out the white noise so you could try to pick up the frequencies that, you know, a spirit's voice would have I yeah that's know. pretty much what this is saying. i'm not a ghost hunter so you know i probably will never be a ghost hunter i want to be one but i can't if i don't even know what a freaking spirit box is <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i remember those shows used to freak me out like the oh really those shows make me laugh because they're like oh, did you see that bobby 
the okay, freaking dark Okay, not, not dark like ones. those ones. I'm talking about like the the ones where they actually had like the stories. Oh, like um, what is that one on Netflix called? Um, My Haunted Experience, I think, or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It used to be on Discovery or something, and it used to freak me out. And I was like, oh, yeah, we were sitting there, and my bottle of lotion came flying at my head. Yeah, no, those shows do freak me out, I guess, because, like, when I was younger, my mom and my stepdad, they were watching a show like that, but it was about aliens. And when they described the alien, you know, they said big brown eyes. And me being eyes. eight or whatever <laughs> age I was, I was like, fuck, I'm a fucking alien. I started crying. My mom was like, why are you crying for? I was like, because I'm an alien and they're going to take me away to government labs and do experiments on me. You guys could totally ask her. She'll totally back up that story. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I absolutely believe it. Anything to make you sound even crazier than you are. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, crazy is what crazy does. You're not wrong there. And in a few, you can hear some faint voices. One of the voices was saying, help me. Another one was saying, run. Um, There was a few that you couldn't really hear, but they kind of were putting in words that they thought they heard. But on a few of the videos, you can actually hear for yourself a lot of these things. Um, voices come in through the spirit box. The next cave is Staircase Cave. This cave is pretty small and hard to access due to size. Nothing too excited with this little guy. The third cave is Pancake Cave and oh my god does that sound yummy. I hate pancakes. What? I love pancakes and I love waffles. Dude I miss pancakes banana or oh my god, what? <laughs> I miss Denny's bananas what? Hold on. I miss Denny's banana pancake stacks. What were those called again? The no, it wasn't with the nuts. I think the walnuts on them. It was uh, part of the fit menu. Banana crunch. I think so. But it dude, been. those know. were killer. Like seriously, I I, I miss working were, at those restaurants. Those are the wheat pancakes, aren't they? Yeah, but those are good. Okay, but pancakes are gross. Pancakes are delicious, but waffles are better, especially the polar bear waffle. Um, yeah, my it's a polar freaking bear waffle. favorite. My all, favorite all is French time. toast, though. <gasps> Ooh, stuffed French toast with some cream cheese and some fresh berries. Yum, and powdered sugar sprinkled on top. Just French toast. That's, oh, why you need French that's toast. too plain for me. As you can hear, I like my breakfasts into desserts. <laughs> this cave is pretty hard to find because there is no trail that leads to the cave. I guess you could try to find it by following the smell of pancakes. <laughs> That's so stupid. Pancakes are disgusting. I've got dad jokes. I didn't know you were a dad. Oh, dad and mom. Tunnel Passage is the next cave on the list. Now let me tell you, by the looks of this cave, this cave, if you see pictures of it, looks freaking spooky as hell. Like, it looks straight from a horror movie. Um, like, one that you would walk up to and expect something to jump out at you. And speaking of it being haunted, what would you know? This is another cave where people hear laughing from little kids. This is one where they hear people faint screaming through the cave. But you know what? I would still go through this cave. I would definitely crawl the 20 feet long, 3 feet tall cave to Why not? You're short, but you're not that short. Well, that's why I said crawl. You don't think I'd be able to crawl through that? 3 feet? It was a joke. Oh, well, Because you're saying. short. Oh, I see what you're saying now. <laughs> but yeah, so like I was saying, the cave is 20 feet long and 3 feet tall. And again, it looks spooky as all hell. The fifth cave is another small cave that you cannot enter due to size. This cave is spring cave. A natural spring flows from this cave. And little fun fact, this is the spring the nearby hotel used for their guest and bottling company. So the next one is pretty interesting because this quote unquote cave is actually a system of caves. And the name of this one is Tartarus Cave System. The Tartarus Cave System is a large system of caves in the park that is still being excavated. It has three entrances. 
the tunnel passage entrance, the Tartarus cave entrance, and the split rock entrance. And last but not least, we have the Cave of Treasures. This cave is newly discovered by the Wisconsin Speleological Society. This cave is located south of the Tartarus Cave System. It consists of a three to four foot high horizontal entrance that leads to over 70 feet of hands and knees crawlway passages. It is believed that further excavation or digging will open up passageway continuation though it will eventually connect up to the Tartarus cave system just to the north. So that's it for the caves. The caves are open to the public. However, some of them are only open seasonally. The park is open to the public, but there are private property areas that are roped off and have private property signs, um, one of which is the property of the hotel. And I will let Ari tell you more about the hotel. All right, so the hotel that Felicia has touched on a couple of times before leading into this is the Maribel Hotel, which is a three-story hotel that was built in 1900. It was a resort that was built uh, for the rich and famous of the time. They would be able to come and stay there. And one of the selling points of the hotel was that there is the spring water that was pumped directly into the hotel from the spring cave that Felicia talked about. The water was believed to possess healing powers and to this day it is still pure and clear water. The caves are directly underneath the hotel and it is surrounded by wooded areas. Um, not much later after the hotel was built, by 1915, the hotel started going under and it was then bought by Adolf Cherney who is the man who sold the caves to Manitowoc County. His family lived there until he passed away, and while they were living there, his daughter Norma died under mysterious circumstances. And obviously in the time, it could have been anything from, you know, mild illnesses or, you know, unforeseen circumstances by what they believe would be, what we would believe as being haunted. There's no information regarding her death. In 1981, a man named Jeff Miller purchased and tried to reopen the hotel, and there was little success as people had already believed that the building itself was haunted. Some of the hauntings that people believe are that there's ghostly images of children that you can see from the outside, which could potentially be Norma Cherney. Um, you can hear the sound of bells ringing and the sounds of wheels churning, which is people believe are carriages being drawn by horses that were left in the stables on the property and there is a story going around that there were old books left in the building and that at any random time they burst into flames. There were also reports saying that there were three different fires in on the property. They believed one happened in the early 1900s, one happened in the 1930s which is where they believed that the the hotel was closed and then they said that there was one in the 1980s. There is only evidence proving that the last fire in the 80s occurred. And that is what ended up closing the hotel once Jeff Miller tried opening the hotel back up. It is now on private property today. And what was left of the building after the fire was actually destroyed in a tornado back in August of 2013 and the current owner does not want anyone on the property because the existing walls that are left are deemed unstable and could collapse at any time. On top of the stories of the ringing bells and the carriage noises, one of the other stories that I have that talks about a potential haunting is that there is a staircase in the cellar basement of the hotel that leads actually directly into one of the caves that the hotel rests on and it is said that you can see a little girl in like a black dress running around and playing and doing her her little thing i know felicia read a little bit about that and that's one of the reasons why they say that the cave is haunted yeah because when i was doing my research i watched a video of a group of people going to investigate for themselves and they actually were in the cave area um by a set of stairs but i yeah. did read too that it was the stairs in the hotel 
And I mean, it could be any, essentially any little girl or whatever, but people believe that it would be the deceased daughter of Adolf Cherney. Um, there were no other recorded deaths in the hotel or the building itself. However, there was another story that when the hotel reopened in the 80s that somebody went a little crazy and killed everybody in the hotel that there's no record of that happening but one of the reasons that people would potentially believe that somebody would have been psychotic enough to break down and essentially murder everybody is that it is believed that a circle of black witches actually came to perform some rituals and ceremonies at the hotel once it was abandoned and they did a ceremony around the well in front of the hotel and that caused them to open up a portal to hell it is believed that if you go there and you look into the well long enough i don't do you remember what they say like the time frame or whatever i don't remember the time frame but i do remember them. it was like a certain amount of time it was like a couple minutes or something like that yeah it wasn't like drastic it wasn't gonna take you all day no well they say that if you look in there long enough you can actually see the flames of hell opening up to suck you in and bring you down to hell uh they did say that a white witch came and closed the closed the portal portal, yeah Yeah. and some of the other hauntings are if you they say that if you shine your flashlight into the building that somebody's inside flashing one back at you and not just like a reflection like you can actually see a light coming back towards you it is also believed that when you're you were in certain areas of the hotel obviously i said that the building was destroyed so you can't actually go and test this out for yourself but they were saying you know when you got to certain places on the second and third floor you could feel like a hand on your back you could feel cold drafts just coming in straight around that area and different things like that there's no real way to ever test any of that out anymore unfortunately so we have no real other haunted happenings or research that we have for the caves and the hotel itself we do have one more little fact that we will leave you with um it's not proven true it's not proven false but it is still a little bit of history on the hotel and i'll let felicia tell you a little bit about that the fact in question is that sometime during the liveliness of the hotel el capone owned it however that was ruled out as false um they also said that el capone and john dillinger would visit the hotel frequently. However, in one of the videos I watched, um, the guy who gives tours for the caves said that that wouldn't be possible because in that time period, Al Capone and John Dillinger were in fact rivals. And I'm pretty sure if they were in the same building together, it would not end well. So I'm not sure if that's true or not, but a little tidbit of, information that went with the story that's all we have today for the maribel caves and the hotel hell if you'd like to follow us you can follow us on facebook at hauntingly wisconsin you can also find us on youtube under the same name and if you have any personal experiences around wisconsin with any hauntings or places that you would like to hear us talk about please feel free to email us at hauntingly.wisconsin at gmail.com and your story might be featured in one of our next podcasts. I'm Ari. And I'm Felicia. And this is us signing off, hauntingly, Wisconsin.